What's your name? Callahan. What are you? Police officer. All right, police officer. This is how we play. The obsession of the of the hero I like. The fact that all he cared about was this particular victim, somebody he'd never met. It was a very American character, the idea that this someone will come who sacrifices his own well-being, his sanity, in order to do what has to be done. When you get a character like that that's memorable in that big of a way. I think it affects all kinds of filmmakers, affects everybody who's making movies because they all want to copy it. The first time I saw Dirty Harry, I was a junior in high school. All right, let's have some fun now. It was probably when I was about seven or eight. I saw it on television. It was one of those films which I watched when my parents were away, which I was sitting all alone. I was much too young. I've got the kids. You start screwing around, the kids start dying. My friends and I used to sneak into a movie theater in Illinois instead of going to school and watch movies. And we climbed in there one day and we watched Dirty Harry. Roll, 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 your boy's a metal, we do it. You, you know, it was kind of an indelible memory to be put in a young man's mind. I totally was caught up in the, uh, in the movie making. It was such a complete surprise. We really hadn't seen anything like that. Jeez. I loved its, um, suspense. I love this political incorrectness. I love watching Clint All I remember is it was entertaining. <laughs> the amazing thing about that movie was that it really did reflect the world at that time. I'm talking about having our fingers in the holes and the whole damn dikes crumbling around us. Um, where a squad of U.S. 8th Cavalry is ambushed by an attack. 68, the riots had just happened. Martin Luther King had been killed. Bobby Kennedy had been killed. Things feel like they were about to implode. A lot of people, you know, feeling disenchanted, disenfranchised, you name it. The police seemed helpless to prevent riots. This was right in the middle of tremendous turmoil due to the Vietnam War. The frustration of, of fighting a losing war in Vietnam at the time, you know, it's it got all of our manhood up in a dander and, uh, you know, what's, what's wrong with us? And all the bureaucracies and everything was favoring a Miranda decision that had come down a few years earlier. People were angry. People were angry with, with a certain erosion of justice, erosion of a sense of the law protecting them. Everybody was just sort of sick of worrying about the accused. They said, how about the, uh, how about let's uh, worry about the, the victims for a while. And Anne Mary Deacon, what about her rights? I mean, she's raped and left in a hole to die. Who speaks for her? There was an incredible increase in crime, incredible increase in violent crime. Society seems to be trying to find reasons to you know, understand criminals of, you know, particularly violent behavior. I think we saw ourselves differently as a nation, and I think we, we desperately wanted someone to just keep things simple. Society then just was looking for something to grasp and grab hold. And Clint came along with the right product and the right story and the right character, and I think the audience just really, like a magnet, attached itself to it. To me, it's like it's wish fulfillment, you know, it's wish fulfillment for adults. What 
Dirty Harry does is takes us to a simpler code, a code of justice, takes us to a world where force works. It doesn't even have so much to do with a gun or the shooting of a bank robber. It, it, it's, I think it has to do with someone who's decisive. And everybody likes decisiveness. He became it. He was the guy that people like me who were underweight and be glassist and physically terrified of all conflict, sitting in the theater watching this guy and identifying with him and wishing I was him. He probably fed some kind of suppressed rage. <laughs> and you know what that means? You're shit out of luck. Here's somebody who does what a lot of us would want to do. A guy who comes and is willing to wade through all of the red tape and just go and do what we'd all like to be done. Why do they call you Dirty Harry? It sort of summed up everybody's feelings at that particular time. I hate the goddamn system. Callahan. Sir. I don't want any more trouble like you had last year in the Fillmore district. Understand? That's my policy. Yeah, well, when an adult male is chasing a female uh, with intent to commit rape, I shoot the bastard. That's my policy. Harry Callahan is your classic, uh, like, American uh, anti-hero, you know, where he, he's, he's against a system that seems to be designed to not protect its citizens in some way. And he's just a voice of reason. I think Dirty Harry probably was in resistance to just stupidity, just out and out stupidity of uh, something where well, you can't do that because of this. Well, why can't you do that? We've got to solve this. This rifle might make a nice souvenir, but it's inadmissible as evidence. And who says that? It's the law. Well, then the law is crazy. Dirty Harry was very much against uh, uh, bureaucracy, against red tape. Dirty Harry, if you watch, he always walks in a straight line in that movie. He doesn't go in circles, he doesn't go around corners, he just walks straight to the problem and either shoots it or saves it or does something. He's one of these people that can, you can count on to defy all the things we've been taught to be frustrated with in bureaucracies. He doesn't care if he gets fired, he doesn't care about anything. Look, I'm coming down there in five minutes, you better have those files open, you pencil-pushing son of a bitch. Here comes this cop who doesn't give a damn, who's being honest. He's saying, you know, I like to hunt criminals. I hunt them with a big gun so that when I shoot them, they fall down. Some guys just need to be blown out of their socks, period. And you don't have to enjoy it, you just do it. And I think that sentiment in our society is what Dirty Harry embodies. Whether I believe it, whether people believe it, they want to spend two hours watching a guy who does believe that. And sometimes it doesn't matter. Maybe he was beaten as a kid. Maybe he was molested. Right now, he's a sicko with a fetish and he kidnaps young girls. He needs to go. He needs to take one for the team and just get his head blown off. Please, no more. You read in the LA Times today that an inspector shot some guy. That cop should be taken off the street. Yet in the theaters, we can't wait to go see this guy and cheer him on. I have the right for a life. Where's the girl? I the idea of, of a cop actually torturing the bad guy uh, is, is pretty astounding. This was a guy who could play on the same playing field, the, the crooked, uneven playing field uh, of the villains. This incredible pullback, this helicopter shot, wonderful virtuoso shot, sets up visually these two gladiators, this cop and this madman, absolutely isolated together in this world of their own making. Whoever it was who wrote this wizard ad line for Dirty Harry really summed it up, said on the one sheet, Dirty Harry and the homicidal maniac. Harry's the one with the badge. The character that Clint Eastwood plays is very much based on tough sheriffs and uh, police officers that we have seen before, played by John Wayne and Gary Cooper. The cowboy is moving into the city. 
and that's where cop action genre comes from. The cowboy movie, the western, is really dying in popularity over the course of the 70s and the 80s, and the cop movie, represented by Dirty Harry, is just coming in to take its place. And the determination and the doggedness of the gunfighter is there with Dirty Harry. It allows for a, a certain mythic quality to occur within the work. Because Westerns have the sense of myth, 